first off, accidental Texan really enjoy the film. And oh. how how cool is it just to have a lead like Thomas Hayden Church working off Rudy and and it's just a great dynamic. Did you know right from the get go that this chemistry was going to happen really well? I mean, no, really well. no, you know that's that's the risk you take in your casting. You know that uh, 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 that that you 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 know each actor in their own right is phenomenal, uh, and you know they have the talent, and you know they have the you know that they're dynamic and they both responded so well to the script but it's until you get them together <clears throat> and so but it very quickly uh, uh i could see even in the rehearsals that there was a great chemistry you know it was wonderful thomas who's the most giving and inviting actor you know he and i would talk on the phone for hours you know for three months leading up to production you know developing our own trust and bond you know and he took you know, like when rudy first arrived thomas took him out to, to where uh, our location where we were, we were going to build the, the oil rig out on, on the, in the farmer's field. And, 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 you know, and they were chopping grass together, you know, and, and laying out the marks uh, uh, by which the, the, the set was going to be built, you know, and it just gave them a chance to sort of offset, just sort of form a bond and that we're all in this together. And, you know, so he, Thomas did such a great job of opening that door to Rudy. Um, and even though, you know, uh, Rudy's a younger actor with, you know, obviously amazing experience with Outer Banks, but, uh, you know, even though he was going against up against these heavyweights, you know, Academy Award nominated actors, uh, you know, you, you never saw it. He just brought his joy and his A game. And it was really on the third day when we had one of the, you know, the most emotional scenes in the movie uh, toward the end of the film. And, and, uh, and thank goodness for that. You know, usually you wouldn't want to schedule it in such a way. Um, but it really bonded the two of them. And then from then, from that moment on, you know, uh, uh, we, they were off and running. You know, the trust was there. And, and I think, as you, as you said, it really, it, it shows in the film. Not only on the, on the dramatic side, but also on the comedy side. On the comedy side, you let those two go and it's just gold. They were just, they were, they were, they were amazing. You know, I really love that, how your movie, it has its share of comedy, but I think it really succeeds as a, as a human story. Because you're thinking, oh, it's going to be one of these really funny escapist fish out of water stories. But actually, it's a really wonderful story about humanity and fathers and sons and, you know, coming of age, no matter what age you are. Can you speak to that? Thank you. That's it. That, then we've done our job. You know, uh, uh, yes, you know, we... We want when we were working on the on the screenplay, me, Julie Denny, and Cohen Wooten. You know, we we wanted to adapt the take this the, because the book is, is is much more of a, a, a sort of a, a fun, crazy ride, and so we wanted to bring much more drama and heart to the film and make these make these stories, uh, uh, you know, uh, add the dramatic arc to it to make it much more cinematic. So that's. It's, it, there's many layers. We wanted to add a lot of layers to the characters and to the story so that you can, you know, you have a full gamut of the human experience when you're watching the movie. Yes, you're coming in for the comedy, but oh, you're surprised that there's this wonderful drama. And as you said, the, you know, the humanity of helping strangers and, and the forgiveness and, and coming to terms with your relationships with fathers and sons. And, you know, again, that's the sort of thing that's just going to make it a much more, I, I believe, fulfilling experience as, as an audience. Uh, I love those kind of movies. I haven't seen a lot of those movies lately. So we wanted to, to deliver something kind of fresh and new um, that, you know, ultimately you, you come out with a smile on your face and you feel you, you've experienced a, a very fulfilling uh, story. And so, I, I'm so I'm just so happy that it resonated with you. And Yeah. Uh, Mark, I'm going to have you be a, a narcissist for one second and look in the mirror. And I want uh, to <laughs> ask a general general question is, is that what do you attribute to your success as a storyboard artist? What qualities do you have that really made you successful in that form? And does that success have a linear path to becoming a successful filmmaker? Or are there other tools that you needed to hone in your toolkit along your journey to be becoming a director as well? Great question. Um, I think for, to be, uh, you know, to be a storyboard artist, which is, you know, you know, you're, you're, you're sketching out shot by shot uh, a, a film, television, commercial music video. You know, many people think, well, you can draw and you love movies. Those are your talents. Well, it's so much more than that. You have to also be Im immensely versed in cinematography and editing and writing and directing in, in, in blocking 
you have to know all of these facets of, of cinema and because you know it's your job in many cases to design how a scene is 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 developed and, and built and how one scene becomes a sequence and a sequence becomes an act and, and right so you're learning so much of that and you have all of those skill sets to really become a successful storyboard artist. So then the step into the director is in many ways is quite easy on the technical side. You know, uh, you know how to set up a camera, you know how to design a scene visually, you, you know, you know, you, you know, editing and you know how it's supposed to flow and, and, and you, you know, you've worked with the writer, so you know how, right. And then ultimately, though, it, it's all about the performance, like all of that work and all of that pre-planning and storyboarding. You know, I storyboarded nearly every shot in the movie. Uh, it all comes down to performance. And so for me, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, previously had taken a lot of acting courses and I've directed a lot. And, and I, you know, I have a very collaborative spirit on, on set. You know, I really I trust these performers. I trust. They're bringing their talent, so utilize it to every degree. Listen to them, let them bring their ideas to the table. Then they feel trusted and and relaxed that they can they, they can give their best performances. Um, so the the technical side, all of it, is a great asset to running a very efficient set. Um, and then you just have to, which is great because you can kind of let that be in the background, so that you can focus on performance uh, because the movie is going to live and die by those performances. Um, and so that, yes, that's, uh, thank you for asking that. It's, uh, uh, it, it's a fairly unique, you know, I mean, uh, Ridley Scott does his own storyboards, uh, James Cameron used to, I know Tim Burton is a storyboard artist, a filmmaker, you know, uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's a very kind of rare, uh, uh, set of skills, but, um, you know, I, 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 there's nothing I love more than just sitting down with a blank sheet of paper and, you know, designing a shot, you know, for, for whatever reason, probably because I've been obsessed with movies since I was born and had the ability to draw, but for whatever reason, I can see cinema in my head as if I'm watching the movie and then I'm just taking these, you know, making these drawings out of it. Um, and, and having that vast experience on all these movies I've worked on all came to the table when you're making your own, you know, um, so uh, I, I thank all those amazing filmmakers and all, all the immense things that I've learned from them. Um, you know, even though I've only directed very few things, uh, you know, you're utilizing that vast amount of experience uh, to come to the table for, for your own project. You know, I, I really love these three main characters. And I was wondering, you know, did you have to leave a lot of scenes on the cutting room floor? Because these are characters you just want to learn more about and whatnot but you really you as a filmmaker you have to make this really lean entertaining immersive film and maybe cut out some extra stuff did you was that happen was that a reality for you or was it really th that way from the get-go as far as being it lean a lean good narrative well again so many things i've learned is, 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 you know and, and it goes it, you know again it goes back to hitchcock you know what are the three most important things about filmmaking story 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 so we spent so much time on that screenplay because, uh, you know, I, I've learned, uh, you know, that if you put all that effort into the story up front, you know, Spielberg says, you know, if it, if it doesn't play on the uh, on the page, it's not going to play on the stage. And so you put all that effort in the screenplay to make it. And, and then the storyboards really stress test that it's, your, it's kind of the last draft of the script. And so, you know, you're starting to really see are these transitions working is the sequence working. Right. So it already starts to stress test the movie and start to cut the fat out even before we start shooting because on an independent film, there's no time for reshoots. There's no time for any mistakes, right? If a truck gets stuck in the mud for three hours on the two days that you have Bruce Stern, now you have a day and six hours with him, you know, there's, there's no extra time. You're gonna have to start cutting scenes. And so you have to be incredibly efficient. And, and so, you know, incredibly enough, because we spent so much time on the script and uh, we only cut three scenes out of the movie um which were, were really sort of and we recrafted the ending to, to to let it land more emotionally we had some comedy that kind of then moved back into an emotional moment so we we kept the through line of that emotion um but it was a you know a, you know we spent so much time crafting that script to get these actors that then led to a very efficient film with the asset of the storyboards that then led to a very efficient editing you know i think our our rough assembly, which is when you have every scene in the movie just 
roughly put together. Usually it's a nauseating experience for a filmmaker to watch. Uh, when we came out of that, we were all like, wow, that's not half bad. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. And we ended up chiseling 45 minutes out of that rough assembly. And it wasn't so much cutting scenes uh, uh, as just tightening and, and honing in on the core elements of the story. Um, you know, because it's, you know, you have to honor, it's an independent film. These, these are people's money, whether it's a, well, whether it's a big studio film or not. Um, so if you put that effort into the screenplay, then you're, it's going to pay off in dividends down the road, you know, because there was, you know, our editor work on another movie and their rough assembly was an hour and a half over what the final cut of the film was. So they basically made two movies. So you're wasting all that time and money and effort and, and energy, uh, uh, that could have been put into the screenplay. You make sure you have a great script that's going to attract those actors. And then you're going to have an efficient film that comes out of that. That's my, that's my approach. Mark, thank you so much for your time. We really love your film and so excited for your next one as well. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm sorry for the long answers. Uh, no worries. And, and by the way, that was not, a, that, I was cutting onions at the end. That was, that was not me crying. So th thank you so much for your time. I really love that the emotional stuff too. So appreciate it. Greg, thank you, sir. Have a great day.